Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 17th June 2017. I am Sagan Chief Analyst and Trader of Superior Profit, a company based in Singapore. I will not spend time to introduce myself. You may visit the website www.superiorprofit.co and click on the About menu. You will not only know about me, but also about the company and more importantly, how it can help you in your own trading. Before we begin, let me go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we will look at oil, gold, India's nifty futures and few forex pairs through Q technical charts. Also look at SPY, QQQ, DIA, IWM, the US market ETFs through Q technical charts. Before going into broad market internal analysis, sector and industry analysis through graphs and ranking table. Along the way, we will look at trade ideas for the upcoming week. And if we have time, we may look at some of the posts in our community since our last class. Q&A is throughout the session. You may use the Q&A panel to ask questions and I'll try to answer them as I go along. That was the last PowerPoint slide for this session. Let us move to live system. Let us start with US oil. We are looking at USO, the oil ETF with weekly backdrop chart on the left hand side and daily hop on chart on the right hand side. In last week's session, we had discussed that price had come to the watermark support level. If it went up, it might give us a sideways market box long trade opportunity. If you remember all the checklist conditions for box long trade setup, you will notice that on this candle, many of those conditions were fulfilled, but not all of them. Namely, the candle was bearish. However, one of the requirements for box long trade setup is that the candle need to be bullish that is either hollow or with lower tail. Because the checklist conditions were not fulfilled, superior profit traders would not take any long trade at that point. And that turned out to be a good decision because US oil fell further. In the weekly chart also, it has declined below the watermark support level, we now need to see whether it goes back up, creating a false downside breakout in both weekly and daily chart. If that happens, then we may have a box long trade opportunity in coming days. The other possibility is that price may go up a little bit and then till down giving us a go with flow short opportunity at that time. Right now at the right edge, there is no trade setup in US oil. Let's look at gold. For gold, last week we had discussed that price was going up and it already went above the upper boundary line. Because it was overbought, as seen from the green dots on top of the candles, we would not be taking any long trade. In previous week's class, we had also discussed that price was near the watermark resistance level, both in daily and weekly. 
and we mentioned that if price goes down it will create a fake upside breakout and may give us a box short trade setup again on this candle almost all the conditions of a box short trade setup were fulfilled a trader may hesitate only because this candle had a long lower tail other than that all the conditions for box short trade setup were fulfilled after that price actually went down making it a successful sideways short trade setup however because of this candle having long lower tail at the end of this day it will be difficult to take a short trade and next day we can see that gld opened with a gap down then it tried to go up little bit as seen from the upper tail of the candle if somebody was using real time chart q fine tune chart then one might be able to take a short trade at the very top of this candle using stretch release signal however those are possible day trades based on the end of day chart Though gold went up and came down, creating a false upside breakout, it was not easy for a swing trader to catch the down move. Still, the charts are very useful because the people who entered a long trade near the bottom or somewhere along the way using go with flow long trade setup they by knowing the possibility of a false upside breakout and a box short trade setup would have tightened stop or book profit by using q protection signal so that way at least the profit would be protected even if we couldn't catch the down move from this watermark resistance level at the right edge of the chart price is near value area this is not an area where we would like to take any trade one possibility is that gold goes down to the memory support line and goes back up from there giving us a bounce long trade possibility the other possibility is from the value area itself price starts to go up giving us a possible go with flow long trade setup let's now look at india's nifty futures this is nifty futures of india using q hop on daily chart in the last session we had discussed that price was close to upper boundary it was moving in narrow range days and we were not going to take any long trade in this week nifty futures declined little bit the candle colors candle traffic colors turned red or flow colors turned magenta the thumbs down signal show that it is at pendulum high however it continues to be in uptrend so if we apply our unambiguous checklist then there is no valid trade setup in nifty futures right now one possibility is that price goes up from here giving us a possible go with flow long signal i think there is no possible short trade setup anytime soon for a short trade setup to come we need price to go up and then come down again giving a possible headwind short or a box short trade setup there is no possibility of go with flow short trade setup right now because it continues to have higher highs and higher lows so at the right edge of the chart there is no trade setup for nifty futures
let's now look at some of the forex pairs we start with sing dollar okay now we are looking at weekly backdrop template on the right hand side usually it comes on the left hand side for some reason it has come on the right hand side now no issue weekly backdrop template on the right hand side and daily hop on template on the left hand side we discussed in the last class for sing dollar that price was displaying a series of bullish headwind and price was close to lower boundary so we were not going to take any short trade and we already noticed the memory support line in weekly in fact last week it was there in daily also somewhere here so looking at that we mentioned that if anything we would like to take a long trade if a proper setup comes and attempt to book profit at the memory resistance line in weekly or near the yellow slow direction line or value area in daily now we don't see any trade setup valid trade setup that came on our daily chart in this week so we would stay away from taking any trade Wednesday price went down and Thursday it recovered all that and closed little bit higher than high of Wednesday. So this was a false downside breakout in the daily chart. However, we see that price was right at the memory resistance line. So we will stay away from taking any long trade. On Friday, price tried to go up, however, closed lower with a bearish shape candle. At the right edge of the chart, we still don't have any valid trade setup. In the weekly chart, we see that price tried to go below the memory support line. However, price closed the week above memory support line. As we keep on discussing in all the weekly market roundup sessions, keeping an eye on the memory support or resistance lines allows us to be very precise in taking a trade. So both in the previous week and also in this week, as price initially went down or opened down and then closed higher above the memory line, using fine-tuned real-time chart one could take precision day trades on these forex symbols also note that in this week there was federal reserve rate change decision in america that probably gave rise to these moves on wednesday and thursday because these are considered major events this pair sgd usd involves the american dollar interest rates impact also so we would stay away from taking any position or swing trade at least on wednesday and thursday day trades could be taken not exactly before the announcement time but at other times some day trades could be taken if the moves were not too violent However, during such important events, we stay away from trading forex symbols, which has USD in the pair. And that will be true for Australian dollar also. Let us have a look at that. Again, we are looking at daily hop on chart on the left hand side and weekly backdrop chart on the right hand side. In Australia dollar also, Wednesday and Thursday's move were wild. And because of the FOMC rate decision, we will stay away from taking any trade. In the last class, we had mentioned that the move in Australian dollar from memory support line seemed to play out ahead of SING dollar. And that up move is continuing. We just saw that SING dollar is still at memory. Memory is able to so far support the price. At the right edge of the chart, Australian dollar is already close to the upper boundary and it is also overbought. 
so we will not be taking any long trade it is clearly in uptrend so we are not going to take any short trade either so at the right edge of the chart there is no valid trade setup in australian dollar let's now move to usa market and look at the broad market etfs this is the second week in a row that spy outperformed qqq for many many months qqq was the strongest etf last week qqq fell underperformed spy and the same pattern continued this week as well now we are looking at spy with weekly backdrop template on the left hand side and daily hop on template on the right hand side our usual arrangement we see that a bearish headwind appeared on wednesday and since then price came down friday closed with a bullish shape candle the color is still magenta that is bearish on a closing basis friday's close was below thursday's close in the weekly chart we see that a bear release signal has appeared that is the overbought condition is not there anymore the candle has lower tail but the upper tail is bigger than lower tail still somewhat indecisive the bullish candle shape in daily often indicates that price may go up little bit before falling if it at all falls at the right edge of the chart there is no trade setup on this day though the bearish headwind appeared the candle closed with a lower tail so we would not be taking any short trade on that day next day price opened with a gap down and went up so that most likely gave rise to a gap long day trade setup using q fine tune chart so at the right edge spy has no trade setup right now let's look at dia dow jones industrial average was the strongest last week and this week also in weekly chart it went up for four successive weeks it is overbought in weekly chart it is going up being supported by the memory support line at the lower end in daily chart also we can see the memory line and it is going up linearly not giving any pullback price is already close to the upper boundary in daily chart it is overbought so there is no possibility to take any long trade now and it is strongly in uptrend so we are not going to take any short trade either there is no trade setup at the right edge of dia now let us look at qqq we can see that for successive two weeks qqq dropped and this week also ended with a bearish shape candle as well as bearish color backdrop candle in the daily chart we see that this week price tried to go up little bit but came down again however closed right on top of the memory support line and this is for the third days in recent times that the memory is able to hold price because the memory support line is so close we are not going to take any short trade right now and because the traffic light candle color is bearish we are not going to take any long trade either we can see that for qqq unlike the other two etfs activity is very high both in daily chart and in weekly chart in the recent two weeks let's look at iwm in the last session we had mentioned that price was near the watermark resistance level and we told that if price goes down with a bear release signal it may give us a box short trade setup on this candle the bear release signal appeared however again there was a lower tail so we will not be taking any short trade at the end of that day also 
box short trade setup has a requirement that the weekly candle color should be at least neutral we can see that on friday's close the price dropped more from this yellow daily candle the weekly candle color still ended cyan so we can expect that on this yellow candle day also on daily weekly candle was also cyan so that also did not meet all the requirements of box short trade setup for these two reasons we will stay away from taking any swing short trade on this bear release candle at the right edge of the chart price continues to be in uptrend with higher low and higher high it is at value area traffic light candle color is red candle shape is bullish so we are not having any long or any short trade setup at the right edge of IWM. That was an analysis of few commodities, Forex pairs, India Nifty futures, and the USA broad market ETFs. Now let us move to broad market sector industry analysis through graphs and ranking table. For broad market analysis, every week, we look at NASDAQ composite index using weekly chart on the left hand side and NYSE composite index using weekly chart on the right hand side. Other than the indices themselves, we look at three pairs of internals, new high low, advanced decline numbers and up down volume. We see that in weekly chart indices continue to move up both for NASDAQ and NYSE. Just like we saw that SPY was outperforming QQQ for last two weeks, we see that NYSE composite index is outperforming NASDAQ composite index. The internals continue to be weak they are not able to surpass the highs made long time ago in this specific way we see the internals ended in a mixed manner these three internals ended positive and these three internals ended negative we know that from the coloring Red or magenta color means that the internals ended negative and green or cyan means they ended positive. If we look at which ones increased and decreased, we see that out of the six internals, five of them declined. Only one internal, that is NASDAQ up-down volume went up. On balance, we say that the internals are neutral this week. For a longer period, internals continue to be weak and the indices continue to be in strong uptrend. Because this analysis is using broad market indices and weekly chart, this is to be used for longer term investment decisions it is not to be used for swing trading and certainly not for day trading. Let's now move to industry and sector analysis using graphs. Every week for sector performance analysis, we look at 10 broad market sectors across three review periods. Current week that is shown by the red bar. One week prior to red bar that is shown by the blue bar and two weeks prior to blue bar that is shown by the green bar. Together they constitute four weeks or one month of performance. In this week we see that out of 10 sectors six gained and four declined. Painting a mixed picture for the week. This was same in the previous week as well. Non-cyclicals took a hit largely due to Amazon entering the brick and mortar retail business by acquiring Whole Foods market. 
and several companies including KR, SVU, SFM took some of the largest hits. Even other companies like Walmart, etc. declined, but the biggest decline was seen in KR, SVU and SFM. Let us have a look at these three charts now. Here is Kroger. We are looking again at weekly backdrop template on the left hand side and daily hop on template on the right hand side, our usual arrangement. Interestingly, we see that though the Amazon acquisition was public on Friday, on Thursday itself, KR dropped with a huge gap and continue to move down. By looking at this daily candle, we are clear that there was very good gap short trade opportunity, that is a day trade opportunity on this candle. On Friday, price opened with a gap down and then went up later. We may check the Q fine tune template to see if there was a gap long trade opportunity. Let's look at the fine tune chart now. And from the fine tune real time chart, we see that clearly we had two successive days with gap down. However, we had two different types of gap trade opportunities. On Thursday, relative to Wednesday's close, price opened with a huge gap down. Soon after that, the early range high and early range low were formed. And as price went below early range low, a gap short trade opportunity came. The stop for that will be just above early range high. That was never approached. Instead, price went down. The risk distance was the distance between early range high and early range low. Once that distance was covered, one could start booking profit. So one could start booking profit around this price level or the next opportunity was to book price at the pause intraday pivot lines. So this turned out to be a very profitable gap short day trade opportunity. On Friday, after the news became public, relative to Thursday's close, price again opened with a very large gap down. However, in this case, once the early range low and early range high were formed, price actually went up, giving us a low risk gap long trade opportunity stop will be just below early range low that was never approached the risk distance was the distance between early range low and early range high so one could start booking profit when that distance was covered but we see price didn't go up so much so using our day trade discipline, the trade would be exited at the end of the day, still with some profit. So we can see few interesting observations from these daily as well as fine tune charts. One is that when a gap happens, we may be able to take trade that is extending the gap or that is trying to fill the gap. Both are possible and that is why we have the gap short as well as gap long trade setup. The other interesting observation is that sometimes before the news becomes public, the stock starts to move. In superior profit way, we try to capture that. It happened not only from the Thursday's gap down, but we see that the bearish headwind in daily chart was again able to catch the top of the price move. If we look at this chart after six months, we may forget about the Amazon acquisition of Whole Foods market happening right on this last candle. 
but we may just look at the technical chart and note that the bearish headwind could capture the top of that move. And this keeps on happening in chart after chart. That is why it is important that we keep a close eye on all the technical signals as well as major market events. At the right edge of the chart, price of course moved heavily down with very large activity both in weekly and daily there is no standard trade setup at the right edge of the chart for Kroger. Let's look at at least one more that is SFM and here we again see very interestingly that though the news was public on Friday there was a very large move on Thursday itself. Here also most likely there was possible gap short and gap long opportunities on Thursday and Friday respectively. Let us go back to our sector analysis. We looked at several non-cyclical consumer goods and we saw KR SFM and you may look at SVU also. All of them took very large hit and in all of them the market move started on Thursday though the public announcement was there on Friday. If we look at basic materials we see that this week it declined. In last session we had discussed that it was going up for all the review periods that is for four successive weeks and now it declined. Is it a buy the dip opportunity or time to be cautious? Later on, we look at some of the stocks in related industries and we'll see that several companies in this sector were lagging the overall market for a long period of time. For a short time, they tried to go up, but as we can see, it declined again so they are still not in uptrend. Some of them are creating bases. So we may look at the more fundamentally strong ones and buy them at the right time when the Q charts give the proper signal, thereby being able to catch the bottom or almost the very bottom of those stocks. If we have time, we may Look at few of the steel companies like US Steel X, Arcelor Mittal, MT, and Vale, V A L E. And we will see that Vale is the strongest one in terms of fundamentals. It is still in downtrend. We may not take any long trade now, but once it starts to go up, if that happens along with the steel industry going up, we may have a good opportunity to catch the bottom of that stock. Technologies continue to fall for the second week. We had discussed BlackBerry as a potential short candidate. In previous week's market roundup, we noticed that HPQ, which was fundamentally strongest between HPQ, Apple and BlackBerry had already dropped. Apple was starting to drop and BlackBerry was weakest in terms of fundamentals, but it was not dropping yet. So we were keeping an eye on BlackBerry thinking that if it drops, then it may give us a good short opportunity. And we were being ready to protect profit if we had a long position. Let's look at BlackBerry today. We can see that as we expected, price fell down in this week. Last week, it was still overbought, but this week the pair release signal has come. And in terms of weekly chart, we see that it fell with a very solid candle. So it's a bearish shape candle and the backdrop candle color is also bearish, that is magenta. And in daily chart, we see the same pattern playing out. It was overbought. After that, it came down, relative performance starting to tilt down. There is no Q standard 
trade setup at the right edge of the chart if price goes up little bit and goes down from the memory resistance line it may give us a bounce short trade setup if it goes to the watermark resistance line and goes down from there it may give us a box short trade setup and if it just goes to the value area and tilts down it may give us a go with flow short trade setup so we may have any of these trade setups possible in blackberry in coming days let's go back to sector graph analysis healthcare continues to be positive so for all the three review periods the green bar the blue bar as well as the current week red bar healthcare ended positive to the right side of the zero level now for more than three review periods so for more than one month healthcare is going up we are keeping an eye on these sectors and industries every week so through that analysis we are able to recognize the first time when healthcare started gaining strength this is again the value of doing this analysis regularly thereby we are able to do a top down analysis from sector to industry to stocks and able to catch the low of the fundamentally stronger stocks when the industry sector starts to go up if we look at energy interestingly the oil dropped the energy sector went up small gain very small gain but still it ended positive in previous session we had discussed about chevron and exxon mobil both of them had given box long trade setup in sideways market and that up move is continuing in this week let's have a look at chevron and exxon mobil now in the previous week we discussed that for chevron in daily chart price tried to go below the watermark support level and went back up giving us a box long trade setup in sideways market on tuesday of last week then price went to value area and came close to upper boundary for a sideways market trade setup our profit target is the value area so at least partial or full profit would be booked on this candle in this week price tried to go down but then closed strongly higher on friday the activity was very large and the candle was strongly bullish both in terms of color also in terms of shape in the weekly chart we see that it tried to go below the watermark support level created a false downside breakout last week and in this week it is continuing to move up with a very bullish shape and bullish color candle now if we look at the weekly and daily chart we can see that as of friday's close all the conditions of go with flow long trade setup are met only hesitation would be that price is already close to the upper boundary relative to the risk distance that is the distance to stop loss from entry price so one may not take any long trade in chevron at the end of friday however many of our traders knowing that chevron created a false downside breakout and was going up would be keeping an eye on the stock and using real time fine tune chart will take a long trade in the middle or lower part of chevron's friday candle thereby having a successful day trade or could precisely enter the swing long trade and they may still be holding the trade right now let us look at the q fine tune chart of friday we can see that friday's open was reasonably above thursday's close after market open 
early range high and early range low were formed then price went below early range low in superior profit way we don't just open q fine tune chart and start trading we decide on the trades direction in multiple ways one way is to look at the daily chart and based on the daily chart we were going to look for only long trade so even if price went below early range low at this point we will not be taking any short trade instead we will be patiently waiting for a long trade setup multiple such opportunities came later we saw that price tried to go below previous days close and went sharply back up with a bull release signal that was a stretch release day trade long trade signal we would be happier if it was accompanied by very or extreme high activity that was not there in absence of that to have additional edge to our trades favor we could keep an eye on other similar oil companies exxon mobil for example and if cvs exxon mobil maybe british petroleum several of them started to go up at the same time that would give us more confidence taking this stretch release bullish day trade using fine tune chart the other opportunity of going long came as price went above early range high as a way of precisely entering a swing trade we could take the long trade at that point put a stop loss just below days low that stop was never approached price went strongly higher and closed at the very high of the day so this is the way superior profit traders who track a few stocks regularly can anticipate a move and enter much before others and keep risk to a minimum level and increase the profit let us have a look at exxon mobil exxon mobil also very similar to chevron try to go below watermark support level went back up creating a box long trade setup in sideways market profit would be booked at value area and then price went up further so partial position could be held in this way price tried to go down but just like chevron exxon mobil also closed strongly higher again at the end of friday price is already close to upper boundary the risk distance is higher than reward so we will not be taking any long trade at the close of friday however i think just like in case of chevron using fine tune chart a superior profit trader would be able to take a low risk entry probably even book some profit as day trade and hold the remaining position as a swing trade in the weekly chart also there is very close resemblance between exxon mobil and chevron last week it had a false downside breakout and in this week it continues to move up strongly now we go back to our sector analysis we saw that though oil declined energy sector went up and by remaining alert this week also we could take profitable day trades or precise entry of swing trades in these stocks similar opportunities might have appeared in other energy or oil related stocks as well let's look at industry analysis now we are now looking at five days best performing industries water is now ranking one for the week as well as for the month it gained 3.4 percent for the week and 9 percent for the month for these two periods spy gained only by 0.1 and 1.4 percent respectively 
this way watching the q edge industry performance one may be able to take positions that outperform the overall market so water is continuing to be strong we may see that from our ranking table as well let me quickly move to our ranking table for one minute and have a look at that in terms of industry ranking we rank 160 industry groups every week across 12 monthly periods rank them from 1 to 160 1 being the strongest and 160 being the weakest so we can see over monthly period water is now ranking one that is the strongest and from the graph that we just saw we saw that for this week specifically also water is the strongest so if we are looking for a swing trade in water related industries we are only going to take long trades not short trades and thereby we add more edges to our technical trades we also like to look at the color transition from the right hand side to the left hand side along with the numbers but looking at color is easier and i tend to just look at the color if it is turning from magenta to cyan like in this case then we can see that that transition started long time ago so we could be able to take a long position in water related industries long time ago probably already have some profit and may hold the remaining position until the ranking starts to decline we we'll continue with the industry performance analysis the best performing industries doesn't show any clear pattern they are across all different categories starting from water insurance delivery industrial finance hotel recreational services there is no clear pattern hotels gained hotels were among the worst performers in the previous week so this is showing flip-flop from one week to next now many of the hotel stocks are at pendulum high that includes hilton that is hlt h is hyatt windham and lq lq is i forget what lq is we can check it out all of these stocks are at pendulum high and it is flip-flopping so one may keep tracking them for two purposes one is to protect profit and one to look for potential short especially in those which are fundamentally weakest let us have a look at these three or four stocks and i may ask you to tell which ones are technically weakest and which ones are fundamentally weakest let's look at technical charts first start with lq la quinta is it bullish or bearish looking at this at a glance view is lq bullish or bearish you may give your answer through the q a panel it is clearly bullish it is going up in the weekly chart and also in the daily chart though it is not going up strongly in the daily chart it is at watermark resistance level both in daily and weekly it is at pendulum high as we can see from the color of the bear release signal bear release signals come as magenta if it is at pendulum high they come as red if it is not at pendulum high so la quinta is bullish however it is at watermark resistance level in the weekly chart we can see it is moving sideways for a while for several months the last high was made at 
it was made in the beginning of the year this year and it is not able to decisively go above that so for six months we can say that it is not able to go up on friday it did go up now if it goes down it may create a false upside breakout we will keep an eye for that i also see there are several memory support lines so even if price comes down creating a false upside breakout we may not be able to take any short trade right now there are many memory support lines very close to the price so we keep this chart in mind and let us move to windham win this is also clearly bullish again we see that it is at pendulum high as seen from the bear release being magenta and the bearish headwind also being magenta it is at pendulum high however at watermark resistance level both in daily and weekly we see that a bearish headwind was created a bear release signal was created and price is not able to go up for several weeks now the last high was made on this week it is around end of april since then price is not able to go up so if price goes up now to the watermark resistance in daily and tilts down it may give us a box sideways market short trade opportunity and just as we saw in case of Exxon Mobil Chevron, by anticipating that, one may use the Q fine tune real time chart to enter the trade precisely using low risk and potentially much higher return. Right now, there is no trade at the right side of the chart. Let's look at Hilton. It is displaying a similar pattern. It also displayed a bearish headwind in daily. It has several watermark resistance levels. However, in weekly, we see that it is stronger than LQ and Windham. Because in weekly, it is not moving sideways. It is moving in strong uptrend. So technically speaking, we can see among these three, HLT is strongest. So we are not going to attempt short trade or at least we prefer not to we prefer to take a short trade in one of the other stocks lq or windham interestingly friday it was a gap up candle at open but then in closed lower and it had extreme high activity so this kind of sudden and so extreme high activity is something we always like to keep an eye on they does not always say that the stock is going to move but they do sometimes say that the stock is going to move so we are always aware of that and keep an eye on that let's look at the last stock that is Hayat I don't know which hotel you prefer when you travel around but that may not have much bearing on which stock we are going to take long or short. Hayat is similar to LQ and Windham. It has multiple watermark resistance levels, both in weekly and daily. For many months, that is since, since beginning of the year, price is not able to go up decisively just moving sideways in the longer term weekly chart so if now price goes to the watermark resistance level and goes down it may give us a very low risk and higher profit because the memory support is further away box short trade setup now let us look at these three stocks or four stocks through fundamentals We'll use Q Vital Fundamental Analyst for that. Let's try to find out the PRs of Hayat. Do the fundamental analysis calculation by clicking this calculator boy. It is showing, it is retrieving and calculating the data. 
it has completed we see most of the companies are in united states some are in singapore thailand and canada but let's look at the scoring all we need to do is look at the first five columns the sixth column is relevant for financials like bank for non-financials like hotels just look at that first five columns and see which one has maximum number of red color we can look at the number but the number is not required we can just look at the color and we can immediately see mar i think it is marriott is one of the weakest bell is also one of the weakest ht ht chh are weaker but if we look at all the columns clearly bell and marriott are the weakest of the stocks that we saw we see windham is actually quite strong in terms of fundamentals hayat is weak weaker than windham hilton do we have hlt yes hilton is weak in some respect but in terms of earnings reliability it is strong hayat is clearly weaker than that and lq lq is also fundamentally stronger than marriott stronger than hayat and weaker than windham so if we are looking for short opportunities if we are able to combine fundamentals with technical industry outlook that is better so if we could have a short opportunity in technical charts on marriott or bell or hayat that is good hayat seems to be moving sideways so we may keep an eye on that and you see sometimes this peer analysis helps us identify opportunities let's have a look at marriott and bell what is bel we can go to basic information and look for bel that is belmont it's also based in us mar is marriott so let's look at bel and marriott using our at a glance chart belmont has memory resistance as well as watermark resistance nearby in daily it broke above some watermark resistance but came down this is one of the weakest in terms of fundamentals so if it gives us a valid short opportunity we'll be happiest to short this one let's look at marriott also that is also fundamentally weak relative to its current price marriott in terms of technical charts is quite strong similar to hilton it is going up so it may be not the optimal stock to look for short bel belmont may be the optimal if it gives us a signal on technical chart then we will be able to combine technical fundamental and if the industry starts to roll over also industry analysis together let's go back to our industry analysis so we looked at hotels we saw that it was flip flopping from one week to another that lead us to look at some of the stocks and we identified that few of them are technically going up strongly like hilton whereas others hayat windham lq also bel moving sideways so we may look for short preferably bel because that is technically moving sideways and fundamentally one of the weakest let us look at the five days worst performing industries now back to amazon 
Amazon's Whole Foods Market acquisition clearly shook the food retailers. It is now the worst performing industry. We saw this acquisition's impact in sector graph analysis also. Consumer non-cyclicals dropped. And in terms of industry, food retailers and wholesalers dropped heavily, 8.2%. Walmart, Costco, and Kroger dropped. We already saw Kroger and also SFM. They had started dropping on Thursday itself. Now, in case of Kroger, we didn't see any support level on at a glance template. But if we had switched to decision template, which shows annual pivot levels and quarterly pivot levels, we would have seen that Kroger is actually at a support level. And Walmart and Costco, very large and reputed companies, these also fail. However, memory or watermark level is supporting those two stocks. So for these three stocks, we may keep an eye for a possible recovery in the long direction. Interestingly, bearish Edwin could catch the top of some of these stocks, even though it was an event-driven drop. We want to find out among these three stocks, Walmart, Costco, Kroger, all of which are at support level of some kind, which one of them are fundamentally strongest and look for potential recovery in that stock. And when I did that analysis, I saw that GNC, though not exactly in a similar business, seems to be forming a base for a long time. This is why I like to do the Q vital peer analysis, because sometimes it unexpectedly shows me a potential trend that may give very large profit. We saw that in case of hotel industry also, we found BEL to be the optimal short candidate, not the ones that we started with. And in case of this industry, that is food retailer and wholesalers, we started with Walmart, but one of its peers was GNC, and we'll have a look at Walmart, Costco, and GNC also right now. Before going to the charts, let us have a look at Q Vital fundamentals. We we'll start with Walmart, get its peers, and do the Q Vital fundamental analysis, retrieving and calculating the data. And you can see how I found GNC. It's not exactly in the same business as Walmart, but it was retrieved based on Reuters information. We just go to scoring, and we see that some of them are weak, like. CASY. Whole Foods Market, WFM has already been acquired, so we are not going to take any trade on that. But if we look at the first five columns again, looking just at the color, can you tell me which one looks strongest fundamentally? The one with maximum green sales. Which one will that be? Very difficult, isn't it? <laughs> Okay, Kroger, yes, yes, it takes only a few seconds. And that is the, that is why I love this. So Kroger is the strongest. Walmart has good earnings reliability, but relative to price, it is not optimal right now. Kroger, the reliability is not high, but that is fine. If earnings is not nearby, we don't have to worry so much about the first column that will have an impact more near the earnings season. But otherwise, if we look at the remaining columns, Kroger is one of the strongest. That is why we would like to look at that. And GNC is the next strongest if we look at the color coding. So let's look at GNC, Walmart, Costco, as well as Kroger using Q at a glance chart. Let's start with GNC. It is creating a very nice base. It was 
much higher priced earlier about fifty dollar and now it is only seven dollar fifty six cents only seven dollar fifty seven cents last traded closing was seven dollar fifty six cents that is a very large decline and in the weekly chart we can see that it is starting to create a base which is seen in the daily chart also in last earnings it did try to go up with extreme high activity then pull back right to the support of the base and this is also a pattern we can keep an eye on because it was already creating a base moving into the earnings it did a gap up move after earnings then came down to the base the long-term investors in superior profit they keep an eye on that and try to catch it right at the bottom using the bull release signal we see bull release signal came on this candle also however as per our guideline on a red traffic light candle, we are not going to use the pull release signal. So our optimal entry opportunity came on this yellow candle. Stock loss will be just below the memory support line. It was never violated. Price went up and when it hit the upper boundary as well as the memory resistance, some profit could be booked and the remaining may be left, making sure that this potential long-term investment and also swing trade is already profitable and guaranteed profitable from now onward. So this is GNC. We came to it from peer analysis of Walmart. Let's look at Walmart. We can see this huge drop on Friday with extreme high activity. However, it recovered very nicely and closed above the watermark support and also memory support level. So again, this is important for us to keep an eye on those levels. Weekly also had a memory support level. It tried to go below that and recover. Keeping that in mind, some very profitable day trades could be taken. Tomorrow, if price goes up, it will give us a valid bounce long trade setup. Let's look at Costco. Again, we can see extremely high activity on Friday. Price tried to go down. It almost reached the memory support level, didn't quite touch it. The memory support was both in weekly and daily. Ended the week with a solid candle but with lower tail. It has watermark support level also. If Monday price goes up above the watermark support, it will create a false downside breakout. Looking at Costco and Walmart, technically speaking, Walmart seems to have a better support level right now because it actually pierced through the memory support and then went back up, closed higher from open, whereas Costco tried to go up it has a lower tail but closed lower than open on friday let's have a look at kroger kr we saw that kroger dropped on thursday as well as on friday if we switch to the decision template which shows the quarterly and annual pivot levels we see that price went below the support three level yearly support three this is support one support two support three sam pivot levels in daily chart price tried to go below that and went back up with extreme high activity both on thursday and friday on friday it opened with a very large gap down but recovered very nicely ending the day with a candle that is very bullish shape it doesn't have any valid trade setup right now if price goes up it may also give us a valid bounce long trade setup
it may also give us a very profitable day trade opportunity we may keep an eye on the real time fine tune chart on monday let's go back to our industry graph analysis we saw that amazon's acquisition of whole foods market lead to a decline of number of stocks and we saw out of them walmart costco kroger are at support levels and may give rise to potential recovery long trades we saw in terms of sector analysis earlier that basic materials after going up for multiple review periods declined this week and that decline is reflected in multiple industry groups declining this week aluminium non ferrous metal industrial metal mining iron steel and mining also basic resources now several of these companies us steel x aks ak steel cliff cx they were down for long time try to recover and fall again they don't have very good buy opportunity right now but i did the q vital fundamental analysis and i saw vale is one of the strongest fundamentally let's have a quick look at that we are looking for pairs of vale if it cannot find the data that means it is not vale it may be v a l e dot n yes and then you do the fundamental calculation retrieving and calculating the data let's go to scoring and immediately we can see looking at the first five columns in an instance we can see that vale is one of the strongest fmg ax dot ax means it's an australian company is also very strong so if we are able to trade in australia you may keep an eye on fmg as well by the way i looked at multiple country stocks and i saw though the us market is at all time high there are interesting long opportunities both swing as well as long term in many countries that may be one reason if you don't already have global trading accounts may consider opening them so really strongest i will not go to the technical chart now if we have a long opportunity in the technical chart and the industry also starts to go up then this will be the right stock to go long for long term investing let's now look at best rank improving and rank decline industries let's look at industries with biggest rank improvements rank improving industries does not show any clear pattern we saw that in case of best performing industries as well distillers went up distillers are showing flip flop some of these stocks are at pendulum high just like we saw in case of hotel industry stock we had discussed stz earlier it showed a bearish headwind one month ago and couldn't go up since then However, STG is fundamentally very strong. So when I did a Q Vital peer analysis, I found TWE.AX. It is in the same industry. It actually has a valid bounce short swing trade setup right now. It is fundamentally weak. So we may keep an eye on that. Let's have a quick look at this stock. because it is australian stock we have to use meta stock meta stock is a powerful platform that allows us to trade globally let's look at twe.ax here again the arrangement is different from our usual one we are looking at weekly backdrop template on the right hand side and daily hop on template on the left hand side we see in weekly chart it is clearly going up in a longer term however for several weeks now 1 2 3 4 5 for 5 weeks now price is not able to go up there was a bearish headwind signal in weekly chart 4 weeks ago now if we look at the daily chart we see the same thing price is not able to go up for several weeks it is at watermark resistance level it displayed a bearish headwind at the watermark resistance declined from there 
came back to the same level and then went down on Friday with a very bearish shape candle and bear release signal. On Thursday, it went up with very high activity and Friday, it went down with very high activity. That meets all the requirements of bounce short trade setup. Bounce short is the only trade setup that allows us to short on a green candle. And we don't need to look at weekly for bounce trade setup. So based on the daily chart, it has a nice bounce short trade setup. If we take it and if it goes down, then we may book some profit at the ascending cyan direction line or at the memory support level. If we look at its fundamentals, we'll see that it is quite weak. Let's quickly look at that. I came to this stock starting from STZ. I didn't know about this stock. So let's get the peers of STZ, Constellation Brands, and then do the fundamental analysis. We see that TWE.AX is one of the peers. Go to scoring. And immediately we can see that TWE.AX is one of the weakest. And now the chart has a nice bounce short trade setup. Let's continue with the industry analysis. I noticed that railroads are at pendulum high and moving sideways. Again, similar to STZ, similar to the hotel industry stocks. You may keep an eye on CSX, UNP, NSCCP in coming weeks. Fundamentally, all of them are in the middle range. So they are probably not optimal for longer term shorting. Swing trades can be taken. But I noticed in a related industry that is trucking, these stocks are fundamentally also very weak and moving sideways and are at pendulum high. That is LSTR and KNX. So you may keep an eye on them. And if the industry shows weakness, maybe become very happy to short them. I will not go through the charts now. Let's go through the industries with biggest rank decline. One interesting observation, banks and two other financial related industries declined. That is bank, investment services, financials. Now, FOMC declared an interest rate hike, yet the prices of many of these banks, whether large banks like JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, BSC, Wells Fargo, or regional banks, PNC, STI, BBT, all of them hardly changed looking at the weekly chart. This again shows the reason why we superior profit traders don't like to predict market moves. Though the Fed rate hike is supposed to be significant for these banks, they didn't matter much in terms of movement. We wouldn't like to make a trade based on possible move in the financial sector, even if we knew what Fed is going to do. Of course, we didn't know, but even if we knew, we wouldn't be able to make an intelligent decision on where the market will go. Now, clothing and accessories decline. We had discussed two stocks in related industries, Gap, GPS, and LB, L Brands, which are in apparel retailers. The clothing accessories decline. These two stocks are holding well. Now, let me look at some of the stocks that seems interesting, SOGF.SI. We have weekly backdrop template on the left-hand side and daily hop-on template on the right-hand side. Now, this is a company which we see after displaying a bearish headwind in the weekly chart declined sharply. This in Singapore market, SOGF.SI, Sino Grandness. It's a company whose maximum revenue comes from China. It has multiple brands, non-alcoholic beverages. Singapore doesn't allow shorting. However, those who kept an eye on the bearish headwind would be able to protect profit on any existing long position. Then we see here, 
near the end of 2016 it displayed a bullish headwind and since then price couldn't go below the watermark that was created tried to go up came down a little bit forming a nice base the base is very clearly visible in the daily chart it is at pendulum low as shown from the thumbs up signals the third component of movement that is the momentum includes volume in its calculation is starting to turn and remain green for and more so i think this may be a good opportunity to have a long term buy position in this stock and if you remember for gnc which is listed in us we had a similar chart pattern and these patterns keep on playing out you may keep an eye on this sogf by the way has very strong fundamentals let's look at them okay how did i find sogf let me explain i ran the q sonar q pendulum low for singapore market liquid stocks found the stocks which are at very low price then i put all of them in q vital and found out which one of them are fundamentally strongest sogf was one of them and then i opened the q at a glance chart that is the workflow that i followed we clearly saw sogf is at pendulum low shown by the thumbs up signal in the daily chart and if we look at the fundamentals scoring immediately we see that it is one of the strongest let's look at a stock from australia market and one from india market india market will be fiso.ns let's have a look at that it belongs to business support services industrial sector in india do the fundamental analysis it's done is very strong right immediately we see fiso.ns is very strong fundamentally let's have a look at the chart it is a beautiful chart also in my view it had a watermark support level in weekly it is a very deep watermark price tried to go up and come down creating a very nice pyramid it also created a false downside breakout this week price went up with a bullish shape candle in weekly and in daily it went up with extreme high activity with a very bullish shape candle at pendulum low at the same level a bullish headwind had come earlier so this may be another long term investment opportunity as well as a potential swing trade opportunity if we apply the q standard trade setup you can say there is a possible box long trade setup at the right edge of the chart because it is creating a false downside breakout in weekly going up and it has a bull release signal here that is overwritten by the thumbs up signal we can move to decision template and see that but we will not do that you can check it out fiso is one of the stronger opportunities i found both fundamentally and technically so we found one in Singapore SOGF, one in India FISO. We found GNC in US. Let's find one in Australia. Let's look at a gold mining stock. There are many actually in Australia, India. The gold mining one I already posted in the community. It is Silver Lake Resources. Let me go through the community post. This is the post I submitted in our graduates club silver lake resources australia near by point and the analysis was based on this technical chart q at a glance weekly backdrop on the left hand side daily hop on on the right hand side i saw in weekly it came down to memory support very nicely and same happened in daily at that time price was inside a triangle formed by resistance memory and support memory so i suggested if price goes above the memory resistance it may signal a long entry for swing trade as well as long term investment and especially if gld starts to go back up that will support the up move in this stock i looked at the fundamental as well and as of that time we can see immediately that among the companies 
that are in this list, SLR.ax has quite strong fundamental. So we looked at SLR.ax in Australia, GNC in US, FISO in India, and SOGF in Singapore. All of them are fundamentally very strong. We could find it easily using Q-Vital fundamentals, and they have very nice technical charts. They seem to be all at possible buy point for longer term investment as well as swing trading. I will not go through the sector industry ranking this week, but you may look at the sector ranking table and the industry ranking table to find possible long or short opportunities. That is all that I wanted to share in this week's session. Thank you for joining. I look forward to meeting you in our next session. Have a great weekend and trade profitable.